weeks ago, the Jimquisition tackled the Steam Meltdown story of Imminent Uprising, developer of The Slaughtering Grounds. Now, that episode never made it to YouTube, and I believe it's unavailable for viewing right now, but that's a good thing, because the Steam Meltdown story became a Steam Meltdown saga, and it's this saga we will talk about this week. In this super extended special edition cut of the Meltdown story, uh, we do uh, the original, original tale, and then bolt on the newer stuff for a double length episode. How nice. So sit back, relax, and uh, let your jaw hit the floor in amazement at the depths some developers will sink to when they just can't handle some criticism. Another day, another terrible game on Steam. The Slaughtering Grounds has it all. Its levels consist of large open maps littered with unaltered objects, enemies and architecture purchased from a storefront rather than created by the developers, all thrown randomly together with no regard for artistic or mechanical consistency. It has 30 seconds of music that loop incessantly, it controls like shit, you have to be holding the weapon you want ammo for when you pick up ammo because the dev couldn't code different ammo types, and rather than beat a level, you have to sit in a map and wait for 15 minutes to pass until a new level loads because the dev couldn't code exits or map an actual, you know, level. Also the game crashes after three levels. It has an MSRP of $9.99. I recorded the lovely footage you're seeing right now for my YouTube channel, with my natural and obviously highly critical unedited reaction narrating the whole horrific affair. Usually, that's where it ends. A critic plays yet another shitty game on Steam, lets the world know it's shitty, and life goes on. But for some reason, the developers behind the Slaughtering Grounds actually have pride in a game they cobbled together from assets that other developers made, and the reaction was, well, perhaps the most amazing meltdown a game studios ever had. The morning after I published my video on the slaughtering grounds, I was alerted by several viewers that developer Imminent Uprising had responded in what it claimed to be the first of a new series of videos, Review the Reviewers. Not only that, the dev had changed its name to Jim F. and Sterling's son on the Steam community forums, where it confirmed it was behind the video. The video, for its part, was a full re-uploading of my own recording, albeit with bitter text overlays sarcastically speaking as me, noting multiple times that I was a fucking idiot, and that my alleged review of Slaughtering Grounds was awful. The video blamed me for not muting the game's horrible music like I was apparently supposed to, and for not holding an empty gun when picking up ammo, and for not giving a fully detailed review in what was supposed to be a quick look first impressions video. It also blamed me for not working out the game's bugs on behalf of the developer, and kept quoting me as saying, I'm Jim fucking Sterling's son, which quickly became my new favourite phrase. Naturally, this attempt to save face backfired on him and an uprising in a spectacular way. I did a review of their review of my review, which was me uploading their re-upload and recording myself laughing over the whole thing because it was bloody funny. Then the Streisand effect went into high gear, as users gave the game a ton of negative feedback on Steam and went on to uncover a number of appropriated art assets. The game's blood effects, for example, were taken from Google Image Search. You can even see where they fail to wipe the white background from the blood in the game. Slaughtering Grounds' official artwork is a desktop wallpaper made by some someone else and not credited, and it was of course discovered that Imminent Uprising was censoring negative feedback, as well as banning anybody who had anything bad to say about the game or its creator. Even more amazing, the dev held a contest to try and cash in on its poor publicity, offering a free game key to anybody who made a post actually bashing the game. And then it banned anyone who entered the contest. Yes, yes, the dev made its own contest to try and trick people into eating a ban. Bearing in mind that nobody would have paid attention to the dev shady behaviour had they not flipped out. Imminent Uprising flipped out even harder, posting a review of my review of their review of my review. This time the text was overlaid over simple audio of my prior upload, and the tone had changed from bitter attempts at sarcasm to just plain bitterness. Here, Imminent Uprising called me, as well as anybody in the reviews and Let's Play business, a leech, hiding behind the old copyright infringement excuse and claiming I shouldn't be allowed to profit off their 60 frames per second gameplay footage which, let's be fair, was nowhere near a consistent 60 FPS. In addition, Imminent Uprising claimed that by cobbling together a Frankenstein's monster of store-bought assets, it was directly funding the indie community, and if I cost them sales due to my criticism, I'd be hurting the industry because they couldn't keep paying for assets, or something like that. It was a lot of spiteful gibberish 
gibberish, but I think I got the main point. Let's play as a parasite. Games that are put together like shitty Lego constructs are good. It took another day for Imminent Uprising to realise it had fucked up, and it took both its videos down, though not before I kept them. It went on a mass purge of its Steam forums, deleting all the evidence of its tantrum, and by that time, of course, it was too late. Slaughtering Grounds had become an infamous joke at the time of recording. People are still taking Imminent Uprising to task over shady behaviour, and this whole affair gets to join the ranks of Gary's Incident, Guys of the Wolf, Earth Year 2066, and Island Light as a piece of shit game squirted out by an embarrassing developer. Quite why developers keep doing this, and quite why it's okay to stitch together Baby's first video game project on Steam for upwards of 10 bucks is anybody's guess. But that wasn't enough for Imminent Uprising. Not by a long shot. Not content to show its ass with its weird little breakdown, the developer finally decided to go for the classic last resort, that final tool in the box for the cowardly developer who gets desperate enough to silence a critic. A full week after the publication of my original video, I received a notice that the Slaughtering Grounds' publisher, Digital Homicide LLC, had filed a copyright strike against it, effectively removing it from YouTube and fucking with my channel in a number of ways. This kind of behaviour is often a knee-jerk response to criticism, it's what Funcom and Wild Games did to Total Biscuit. In this case, though, it wasn't really knee-jerk since it was their last gambit, which makes it even more ridiculous since we all know how these things go. Imminent Uprising thought differently, however. It thought that in this world of failed takedown strikes, somehow they, among all others, had the smarts, guts, and moxie to keep me censored. In dialogue with incredulous forum members, the dev claimed that it allowed other Slaughtering Grounds videos to remain online and took mine down because I somehow uniquely violated their copyright. So convinced of this unique violation was Imminent Uprising, it promised to see me in court and seemed to expect a full apology from yours truly before the eyes of the legal system. Later, the dev would make a blog post, now removed, but not before legal blog Pope Hat found it, where the dev revealed just how little it understood of copyright law. See, Imminent Uprising's entire case against me hinged on the fact that I said the game was an absolute failure in the description of my video. According to Imminent Uprising, you cannot use a word like absolute if you haven't played the game for an arbitrary length of time, and this violates copyright... somehow. It seems Imminent Uprising takes phrases absolutely literally, as shown in an email it sent to Popad where it declared that my video wasn't protected under fair use because my criticism was unfair. Yes, these guys believe that fair use means fair use. As in, if you think the critic is being a meanie meanie poop head, you can try and weaponize the legal system against them. The developer remained confident in the righteousness of its claim while I filed a counter notification, something that would require Uprising to elevate its campaign by pursuing genuine legal action against me. Despite all the bluster, YouTube eventually reinstated the video after two whole weeks, something that happens when a developer effectively runs out the timer on the takedown strikes without doing anything further. In a truly amazing turn, however, the brain trust behind Slaughtering Grounds was not done. Even after failing to make good on its promises of seeing me in court, even now my video is back online and this will never see a courtroom, they are still claiming they were in the right, that their takedown notice was valid, and they're now blaming the game's lack of success entirely on me. At the time of producing this video, Imminent is still arguing with users on its forums, still claiming that my use of the term absolute failure constitutes copyright infringement, and that I somehow irreparably damaged the company by showing the world what a big piece of shit slaughter grounds is. The studio has stated for the record that it can't effectively prove any of the unique actionable damages I've inflicted on it, but wants us to trust it because it totes happened like for real. It then played the classic, oh I don't have time to fight this, which is ridiculous because there's not a company or person under the fucking sun who doesn't have time to deal with copyright infringement of their work if it's genuine copyright infringement. It's basically the equivalent, what they're doing, of someone getting the shit kicked out of them and limping away going, I let you win. So this is Imminent Uprising, a studio that squirted out an absolute failure of a game, a game I've now played and livestreamed for a combined four hours, possibly more than anyone in the world, and seen all the content for, so I can state fully confidently that it's an absolute failure. This absolute failure was produced by a company that refuses to take responsibility for its awful product or its subsequent inability to garner goodwill or paying customers, instead pinning all its setbacks on one game critic who, let's face it, isn't even all that famous. Let's make one thing clear, however. I did not screw Imminent Uprising. 
imminent uprising screwed imminent uprising. Its behavior kicked off an entire cycle of escalation, with its own actions demonstrably raising the stakes and damaging its own reputation at every turn. Me? I was merely a reactor, a responder to this ongoing shit-flinging temper tantrum, a documenter, if you will, of what's not to do if you're an indie developer and you want to have some semblance of decent fucking PR. Compare this to Ataj Ruba, a game I recently played and was perhaps even harsher towards than I was towards Slaughtering Grounds, where the dev took the criticism on the nose, admitted to all the bugs, and even admitted users may not want to buy the game yet. None of that justifies the game's awfulness because look at it. But that's at least taking some damn responsibility like a real fucking person. And already the audience and potential future customers are taking that well, looking at it and saying, good job you developer, good job you. So good on that guy, shame on imminent uprising, and I'm Jim fucking Sterling, son. When I criticise some of these uh, uh, lazily slapdash jigsaw puzzle video games, some people point to me and say, Jim, I'd like to see you do better. I'd like to see you do better and make a game. Well, that's not gonna happen because when I can't do something and know I can't do something, I don't just do it anyway, then put it on Steam and try and sell it for 10 fucking bucks. So that's why you won't see me make a game. Thank God for Jim fucking Sterling Sam. <laughs>